the Liberal Party out there will be very, very distressed about what's happened. How do you react to that? I think we can fall into a trap that thinking that Alan Jones is a friend of the Liberal National Party in Queensland. He actively campaigned uh, for Labor to win the last state election. So, Alan, I actually don't care what you think, uh, <laughs> because you're not a friend of Conservatives, you're not a friend of the Liberal National Party, um, and I think you're, you're the king of the bedwetters, actually. <laughs> Yeah, well, let me explain about the Queensland thing. <laughs> let me explain about the Queensland thing. I did not campaign for the you Labor did Party. So. I certainly... You, you I campaigned cer for the Labor Party. You actively campaigned against the re-election of the Campbell Newman government. You went as far to call Deb Frecklington, <laughs> the member for Denango, a prostitute. Do you want... Do you, you, want you are actually a grub. Do you, uh, do you want to ask your question and answer it? Or do you well, want to no, ask not Alan it? Jones. That's or what do you, you do normally. Do you want to ask the question and answer it? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, goodness. when they tear themselves apart, they don't miss at all, and that was uh, something that was uh, that was the best example of that happening uh, last night. Andrew Bolt uh, would note as well that he was very quick to call for Malcolm Turnbull well, to yeah, resign because of this, so, as as you would expect uh, him to. I don't think. Well, actually, I was a bit surprised that Andrew Bolt uh, decided to go that far, but. This is a real problem. Well, particularly uh, when we don't know the actual outcome. No, yet. exactly. But the progressives and the conservatives now, and this goes to what we were talking about before, Malcolm Turnbull needing to perhaps bring Tony Abbott into the tent for him to be that bridge... I think he's, he's got to do it immediately that, and into cabinet. Okay. Those on the Labor side will be loving all of this, watching uh, Conservatives going at each other like that. <laughs> it's uh, never happened to us. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, you've seen it all over many years, of course. Uh, with a result like this, it is difficult. It is difficult. Um, and there are questions now about how Turnbull does manage to mm. you know, bring the uh, you know, various factions together. And, and there's a lot of lost, lost votes there, not mm. to Labor for the no. coalition, lost votes to people like Hanson. Exactly, and we all thought that they would come back if there was a protest, but it's not at all clear that no. that's going to happen. We saw that in the seat of Longman last night where the One Nation candidate was preferencing Labor, mm. and that will see uh, Labor winning that seat. And did, did so, Turnbull <clears throat> do anything in his speech last night when he's, you know, had this big swing against him, he's on the, you know, brink of going into hung parliament? Maybe he doesn't, ultimately, but uh, did he do anything last night, do you think, to... Send a message to those lost voters. Yeah. Uh, I hear your, I hear what you're saying. I, I get it. I was flabbergasted last night by that speech. It was angry. It was defiant. It was, it was petulant. It had all the wrong messages, and the biggest wrong message in it was a complete absence of any embracing of the conservative voters who were clearly very unhappy with him. And this is, if you. If you just strip everything else away from last night, what do we what do we find? That there is a big group of voters, probably up to about seven or eight percent of the former Liberal supporters, mm. who are so angry that they're going over to One Nation, other minor parties, and a lot of them aren't preferencing. Well, it's back again. it's actually double figures in Queensland, and it's much more than the Greens polled, three percent more than the Greens polled. And you mentioned Longman. The other one we should mention is Herbert. That's where yes. that One Nation vote was so pivotal as well to, to them losing. What, Regional what happened in Dixon as well? Because you say in, in Longman, the neighbouring seat to Peter Dutton's uh, seat, that One Nation was actually preferencing Labor. Is that what we're seeing happen in Peter no, Dutton's seat? it was particularly seat? the case know. there. And uh, as someone pointed out, uh, the campaign manager for Pauline Hanson in Queensland... James Ashby. James Ashby. Yeah. Who holds the seat of Longman? White Roy. Yeah, now... Back. Yeah, I don't know, you know, we mm. don't know for sure, but, of course, there's a, a, a bit of history. Between. There's, a, there's a lot of history, absolutely. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, what do we learn from this? That if a leader or starts to drift too far away from their base, then they're going to react. We've had that on the Labor side as well when we started to move too close to the Greens. People who are traditional working-class people in, say, Western, Queen, Western New South Wales, Western Sydney, got very unhappy. That's what's happened. Well, when the, the carbon tax and yeah, so on under, exactly. under Gillard, you're right, Labor was punished. Yeah, we were punished. And so, you know, you, you neglect your base at your peril. Now, to, to, to get them back, if you can put your best objective hat on for the moment, uh, what's your view on the Abbott response to Abbott. I've been making the point this morning that I think Turnbull's got has to, if he gets this slim majority, bring Abbott straight back into the tent, into Cabinet, and try and rebuild this show. Because at the moment, it is... Um, it, it, it looks totally fractured, not just in a personnel sense, but also in, in that policy sense on superannuation, where we've seen Liberals 
move away in droves. And, and you even saw last night, you know, speculation on this panel that uh, there may be a revisiting of some of the more, uh, you know, odious aspects of the superannuation package as far as mm. a lot of superannuants who would normally vote Liberal are concerned. But, yeah, I think you're right, Kieran, he needs to bring Abbott back and he needs to do a lot of fence-mending with the Conservative arm of the Liberal Party if he's going to go, you know, and, and be a successful Prime Minister right now... He's a bit of a lame duck, and uh, he, I think that was sort of evident in the way in which he spoke last night. He was angry. He could see that if he doesn't sort things out, he's got a party room that is going to be very punishing. We already heard uh, Bill Shorten on the front foot last night uh, saying that Malcolm Turnbull has lost his mandate. So that gives us, I think, an indication about how Labor's going to play uh, this next parliament, whatever the result, whether it is a, a hung parliament... I don't respect anything. No, but what happens with Malcolm Turnbull's signature policies here? We've talked about super. But what about the company tax cut as well? Does he make the same mistake of doing what Tony Abbott did hanging on to these policies that will not get through the parliament for too long. What does he do here? Does he act uh, quickly on some of these key well, policies? Maybe view, not company tax cut, but company tax, The company tax cut, right, he's taken the 10-year plan to the election and they've said they'd try and legislate the full 10-year, $48 billion worth in one go. They, they've got to try that. If they are defeated, which I suspect they will be, because I cannot see how they get this through the Senate, they've got to cut their losses, get through uh, a small, medium-sized tax cut if they can and forget the rest. And you know what? You know what? That, for the budget bottom line, ain't a bad... No. And for their political <laughs> bottom line as well. <laughs> and for the exactly. It gives the small and medium-sized businesses and they can say they tried. And they will get that through, because Xenophon will back that. Yeah. But just a to... A moderate one. Yeah, and look, then there are challenges too on, well, the joint sitting, if they're going to have it, on uh, the IR bills and so on. But what about the government's claim, and it's not just the Prime Minister but all of them, that we were robbed because Labor did the dirty on Medicare? Uh, I want to show you the Prime Minister even suggesting the police will be called in because of a text message that was sent out during the day yesterday on election day uh, that purported to be from Medicare in the subject line. Here was... Here's, Medi here's Malcolm Turnbull last night. Even today, as, as, as voters went to the polls, as you would have seen in the press, there were text messages being sent to thousands of people across Australia saying that Medicare was about to be privatised by the Liberal Party, and and the message, and the message, the message, the SMS message, came from Medicare. It said it said it came from Medicare. An extraordinary act of dishonesty. No doubt the police will investigate. And George Brandis was with us last night. The Attorney General said yes, they'd already referred this to police. Bruce. I mean, it, I don't know if uh, that's a little over the top there, saying essentially we were robbed on this election and now we're calling in the, uh, the police on this. But it, it is a bit dirty pool, isn't it, if a text message goes out saying it's from Medicare? Yeah, I haven't seen the, this text message, but if it is as described, it's bad. It you know, it, it, it's, not, it's not the right way to play the game. And it, may, but... it might have come from another group. I'm not going to yeah. say who, maybe yeah. up or unions or whatever, yeah. but... I doubt very much whether it's come from the Labor Party, put it that way. But I, what I would say is that they walked into the whole Medicare thing. It was a, it was a, a problem of their own making. When they set up a, a unit inside the Department of Health, didn't tell anybody about it, spent $5 million on employing 20, million, uh, 20 people to work but on aspects of privatisation. No, but when you do that, you give your opponents ammunition. In my experience in campaigns, if there is some smoke, then you'll probably get a bit can of I, fire. Can I just give a bit of a, a, a shout-out to someone... Well, George, George Wright, the, mm. the um, campaign, campaign director Terrific. for the Labor Party, mm. and further, further to that, the, the bloke that won four elections, Bob Hawke, because he fronted that ad in the first That's place. True. And I just... I wonder how powerful that was in going into the, the living room. Yeah, it the wasn't nation. immediately uh, clear. I feel like this was a bit of a slow burn and the success of that uh, campaign even <laughs> seemed to take uh, Labor by surprise uh, in, in some way. But, Bruce, this is an absolute scare campaign. Uh, and this Medicare uh, text message, I think, was appalling. Uh, because you open this text message, it looks like it was sent by Medicare. It's fraudulent. Whoever did it. It, it was yeah. extraordinary. Look, I don't, don't expect me to defend no, no, anything no. like that. I don't think you should engage in that sort of behaviour. Mm. But my point about Medicare is that they actually created the, the ingredients for Labor to run a campaign against them. And if there's some substance to it, 
people will respond. And you saw what happened uh, last night. People who were in the lower income brackets, I think, were very worried about that, particularly in regional Australia, and you saw it reflected in votes. Yeah. So if there's no substance at all to something, people will be dismissive. If they can see some basis to it and, and if it sort of rings true... Mm then uh, people will be responsible. that's where Hawke came in. G gave it credibility. Yeah, he maybe did. Maybe you're right, maybe you're right. Oh, we've got to get to a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Hawke. If you achieve nothing else this weekend... Clean up at Masters with a powerful 1885 PSI pressure washer for just $99. Because this... The showers for the southwest and southeast parts of the country. Clear skies and sunshine further north. Dan Borsher is also up bright and early uh, in uh, Sydney this morning. And, uh, Dan, it's... Um, well, what, what is going to be happening today? Malcolm Turnbull appeared very late last night and was fairly confident, given where the count was. Are we going to hear from him today, do you think? Well, that's the big question, David. Good morning again, whether the Prime Minister will speak to the media today or have any public appearances after the uncertainty we've seen and continue to see overnight. And you'd think the focus today for the Coalition will be on those 11 or so undecided seats. The Prime Minister last night said the Electoral Commission uh, would stop counting at 2am this morning, not count today or tomorrow, and those uh, votes that... the postal votes that haven't yet been counted would be... Uh, continue to be counted on... Tuesday and of course we've already seen comments about the Prime Minister's leadership and you would think that there'll be some soul searching now about how exactly this situation that we continue to see unfolded after this marathon campaign. Dan we'll talk to you soon Bruce Hawker's with us, Laura Jays and David Spears here in the Sky News Centre. Bruce it, there was the comparison made by the Prime Minister no less last night with 1998. Mm. Uh, the, the, the point that's been made is that there were two scare campaigns one with the GST in 98 Medicare this time around, uh, 98, Howard lost the popular vote but won a slim majority. Do you see the comparison? Is it fair? Not really. It, the GST debate wasn't a scare campaign. There was a GST being offered and John Howard went to the electorate and said, elect me if you want, if you're prepared to have a GST. Now, a lot of people were very unhappy with the prospect of a GST, but they elected him and they gave him a working majority. He had a five-seat... I know he lost yeah. the, um, the, the, the vote, the mm. two-party national vote to Labor, but he mm. still ended up with a five-seat majority. He had, a, he had, he had a, One where he needed to. Yeah, he had a working... a, a strong working majority, really. Really, five seats was always going and to be. Maybe Turnbull gets to. I mean, what do you think the best case scenario is for the coalition based on where the seats are at the moment? Yeah, you know, I reckon at the outer limits, he might be able to work with a, a majority of, say, two. But uh, you know, coming back the other way, it's you could easily. No it's not a 98 situation at all. Mm. Where it is similar to 98 is that Labor has done better in the overall vote than one it actually term. has done in the uh, in the seat by seat votes, but it is still re uh, performed remarkably well uh, in, in one term as well. And uh, unlike 1998, that was a reform agenda exactly. with the GST. Yeah. There is no huge reform agenda here. I don't think you can argue that cutting company well, taxes is, is no, not know, on the scale of the GST no. reform. One thing that's similar, Pauline Hanson. Yeah, that's <laughs> that true. Very that's true. true. That was 1998 and yeah. uh, led to you know, a whole raft of, uh, of Pauline Hanson-like election campaigns, including yep. Queensland, uh, yeah. the following year, or the same year, actually. Do so you think a majority of two, so 77 is the best-case scenario for I the Libs? I think so, yeah. But, you know, that's that... what they were saying last night as well. That's mm. what the Libs late last night were saying, that their uh, best-case scenario is uh, 77. Best-case. Uh, best-case. That was late last a, night. A speaker... What would you do there? Would you keep Tony Smith? Uh, because of course you sacrifice one technically on the floor if you have your one of your own as speaker. Yep. Uh, but Tony Smith's been a good speaker. I don't think anyone doubts that. Um, I, I think they'd keep him as their speaker, or, or uh, certainly a, a, a coalition member as a speaker. I don't think they'll try to go elsewhere with that. And uh, they'll make a buffer sure of all one. They, they'll make sure all their members get good health checks and, and have good <laughs> Medicare policies and uh, and coverage Coverings. to make sure that they're out there performing well. I mean, and, and really, I say that flippantly, but you are a heartbeat away from a... And, 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 a and we, can, we can be flippant, scandal, and can flippant be about it, but sadly, I'm... I'm, I'm we know from the last term of office for died. the government, someone died. Yeah, Don Randall passed yeah, away, sadly, you know. Yeah. So this can happen and, and it's not like uh, one seat majority. It, 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 as David said as well, well scandal I mean, could yeah, bring someone down. Craig Thompson, remember that. Yes. He had to go because and of scandal and that cost Labor a vital seat. 
that they couldn't rely on. And to get back to a point of Laura's, you know, it was clear from what Shorten was saying last night that they've lost their mandate that Labor's going to go in and go in hard. So, you know, you could potentially see a bit of a repeat of the Abbott's 2010 to 2013 style yeah, campaign. Looks like it. Just, just yeah. quickly, well, don't. No, we've got to go to a break. Oh, sorry, okay. uh, Bruce. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Last night thank and you. backing Thanks, up again Good on you, this morning. We've got to get to a break. Don't go away though. We'll be right back. We've got more.